Hi everyone, David Manley here. Today I'm going to show you how to do really simple and quick forecasting built into Power BI. A lot of people don't know this exists. So this is what most people are left with is a graph like this at the bottom. You know, your typical line graph that shows how something did over time, right? Sales by week or something like that. And that's fine. It shows you, you know, what your sales was in the past, but what if you could show something like this at the top? See, it's the same graph, except what we did was we stop it here, so it's the same as here, it ends same point, December 25th, 2017, but then it goes on and forecasts the rest based on these weeks. Now, you don't want to do this if you only have like three weeks of data or something like that, because the forecasts are not going to be that accurate. It's still cool to look at, but you don't want to go and pull conclusions based on that. But in this case, we have, as you can see here, a year and a half's worth of data. So what I want to do is I want to show you a couple things. I'm going to take this graph here, which doesn't have it, and I'm going to make it look like this graph here. So this is your typical graph. If I were to click in here, right, and uh, we go in here, and we see that we have week and sales, right? So to get week like this, if you don't know how to do that, you come here, make sure it's not on date hierarchy. If it's on date hierarchy, you won't get that. You have to take it off of this, and you have to click here, and go to week like that or whatever the name of the field is then you bring in your values down here you can actually add to the legend but in this case if I were to add things to the legend from what I have in this uh, data file it wouldn't look good so if I brought in for instance months into here there's not there's only 12 months in a year but look that's what it does it's super ugly so Unless you have something where you only have a few things that you want to see contrasted with one another, I wouldn't do that here. All right, so we have this graph, right? And what most people don't know is you've got this third thing here. So you, most people know about these two, right? This one gives you your fields and your filters, right? And whether it, you know, it has drill through ability and stuff like that. But you also have this one which most people also have used, plot area and general and your title and stuff like that. But what about this one right here? Now, this won't always show up, some of these fields in here. It, it's based on what the data is that you have. So, for instance, if you don't have a uh, time series-based data, you have uh, something that you just call periods, like uh, period 1 through 12 of a year, it's not going to show forecast here. But in this case, I do, right? Because I have these dates and we picked it for a week and stuff. So here it is. And if I take this guy right here, I'm going to show you all about this. So we have, uh, first you have to add it, obviously. Then you have a choice of your forecast length, ignore last, confidence interval, and seasonality. So seasonality is where you can uh, bring into account things like external issues, uh, let's see, business cycles, weather, um, holidays, external campaigns, internal campaigns, white noise, all that kind of stuff's dealt with with seasonality. So what we want to do is out of this, I want to go and pick a point of the forecast length that's reasonable. So if I have a year and a half data, right, I don't want to pick 10 years of forecasting. Now, we're going by week, right? So if I pick 10 points, 10 weeks, it's, that's what that is. 10 points, 10 weeks. I can also go in here and do the same thing in a different way. I'm going to leave it at that. This one up here, I don't remember what I used, but obviously it's longer than that. We'll look at it in a second. But let's just say, I think that one might have been, let's try 20. Let's see what that is. Hit apply. And that's pretty close. Probably a little bit more than 20. Uh, maybe it's 22 or 21. Let's just see. It's still fine. So let's do that. That's about right. And uh, maybe it's 21. That might be a little bit big, but let's do that. Now, next, we want to do is deal with seasonality. Now, seasonality, the rule from uh, the folks at Microsoft and Power BI that created Power BI said is you want to have one fourth of the uh, of the points, the plotted points, not this points. This is the length of the forecast. We're talking about for your graph. So think about this. I have a year and a half, right? So if I have a year and a half, I probably have somewhere around 52, that's a year, plus a half is 25, somewhere around 70 to 80, right? So if I take a fourth of that, what do I have? 20, right? And I think that up here I use 21. So let's just do that and let's see what that happens up being. Doesn't it look pretty close? 
Okay, now I probably have an extra week in there, so maybe we have 20. Let's do this. That looks pretty close. Okay, now what we want to do is look at a couple other things. So if we look at this, my graph's a little bit different. It could be also the height that we're looking at. Maybe it's a little bit taller. So if I bring that up, we're going to bring it close. But what I've also done here is you can go in here and bring in your title. So I've put the title on here, sales by week. I've, um, what I want to do is pick the font color. I want to pick the background color. In this case, we've got this nice yellow right here. Alignment. Uh, let's make that 10. And let's see here. So now we're looking pretty good. Let's put the border in on and border of 10. Now watch, it's going to start looking exactly like it. And then I'm going to go into this a little bit more with you in just a second here. So if I do that and I clip over here, look at the difference. Now this one might be a tiny bit bigger than the other one. Let's just put them so they're about the same size. And let's see what you see here. That looks pretty close in size. So that's how we made it look nice. Now I'm missing one thing here is the trend line. Okay, so let's go back to this guy here. Click over here, the third one again, this one, not the first two. And there's trend line. We add trend line. And this one I made it a different color. So I think I made it uh, probably, was it pink? No. It was maybe a reddish color. No. Maybe a little bit more red. Let's try that. Eh, something like that. That's close enough. It doesn't matter. And uh, you can make it dashed. You can make it transparent if you want. So it's semi there. It's all there. You know, maybe that's why I do is a little transparency in there. So um, now you have your whole year and a half's data in this case. Plus you have, let me show you here, what was it, 20 weeks, right, of forecasted points. And we on purpose picked, uh, let me just minimize this so you can see it. We on purpose picked 20 points and a 95% confidence interval. Now, that means that there's a, we're not, can be 95% confident that it will be within the bounds of the gray area here. Not necessarily on the dot on the line, but it'll be within those areas. Now, we could go and say, what if we want an 85% confidence interval? What does that do? That shrinks it down, right? And if we want a 99% confidence interval, what does that do? It makes it bigger. So that's what you have to keep in mind here is what kind of confidence interval you want. Obviously, 99% means it's probably almost always going to be in that loop. It won't let you pick 100%, and it doesn't let you enter in individuals, but you can pick whatever you want. I don't know why you would want a 75% confidence in a row, but let's just pick 95. That's pretty much the standard rule across the industry. So with this, now the only difference is I might want to go and change the color of the uh, uh, actual graph a little bit. So. We can go in here to shapes and change the stroke size if we wanted to. We can go in here to data labels and change the color if we wanted. If we wanted data labels, I don't want data labels. Um, data colors, we could make it <clears throat> purple if we wanted to. We could make it pink, we could make it green, blue, gray. Uh, whatever color we wanted to but what's really cool with this is now it pops a little bit and uh, it's just really neat to be able to do that very quickly um, that's just not a good color there is it let's pick something that's decent here I don't want gray you can always go in here and pick a custom color too so we could pick let's say I wanted a blue there we go it's nice and bright and blue um, so it says sales by week. It's centered in the middle. It looks nice and pretty. We could always take this and minimize, or you know, make it smaller and put another graph next to it if we wanted to, which is probably what you would do. You probably wouldn't leave it as a, unless you were going to just compare and contrast like two different brands or something like that against each other and forecast them. You could do it with this, but this gives you a trend line. It gives you the forecasting in it. It gives you the regular weeks of data to show what leads up to the forecast pretty neat to do and uh, again to show you what we did again just to review it all simple line graph that we added a couple of features to once you have and made sure you have uh, the weekly data in there like this uh, I can make this data available to you maybe I might 
it might already be in Kaggle, but if it's not, I'll put it up there for you to play with the data set from this. And um, this just shows you how to do it real quick. So I use some aspects of each of these, but the main thing is this one right here. If you have it set up right, you will see forecast as an option down here. And then once you're done and you've picked one, you've put a forecast in there, it'll say right next to it, one forecast, one trend line. So that's how that all works. So now you have a quick way of forecasting. It uses uh, smoothing, exponential smoothing uh, through Power BI's own algorithms inside of it. And we'll use your data to create that. So thanks again for watching. Please subscribe and like and have a great day. Thanks.